You know, sometimes the EPA is the equivalent of that dad that gets up at 5.30 in the morning every Saturday morning to do chores that you already did during the week and to make it unnecessarily loud just so that you know that they're there. You remember like when you were 16 or 15, you just wanted to sleep in until 10, but your dad, he wasn't having it, all right? Then you finally wake up, they give you chores, and they are set out on a mission to make sure you know that Saturdays aren't meant to be fun, they're meant to be work and strict focus, okay? And discipline and structure, because why? Can kids are, why aren't they allowed to have fun, all right? Why won't you let me just grind room crafting? That's all I wanna do on a Saturday. I'm Alex, Alex at FI on Instagram, and today we're bringing you a very special episode. We're talking about the equivalent of vegetables when we were kids. It's the equivalent of the parent that wouldn't let us have fun on a Saturday morning. The association can be traced back to the beginning of the Ruiner of Fun and the recess monitor of the car scene. Today, we're gonna be talking about, ladies and gentlemen, EPA's decision to try to want to take away our car parts. Don't forget to subscribe, and if you're looking for aftermarket wheels, tires, or suspension, which is how we're able to keep up with this crazy channel, be sure to check us out over at fitmentindustries.com, where we quite literally have it all, including a gallery where you can actually see what fits with what trim specs for your year make and model. Honestly, the whole reason that we're here is because we started that thing, and we wanted to make it easy. It's kind of why we built it, because finding wheels that fit is, is actually kind of difficult unless you know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody, and then it's like a 10-hour thing. You don't have to do that on the gallery. You just enter it in, and you just tells you. Ever since the introduction of people slash life, there's been a group of people angry at those people for being happy, okay? Screw their happiness. How dare they have fun, okay? Unlike that, they should be miserable, like me, all right? I'm talking about this group, all right? The group that's been that way for the car enthusiasts of the world has almost always been the Environmental Protection Agency, or the EPA. Founded by Richard Nixon, which is kind of interesting, given his questionable history, with William Ruckelshaus as EPA's first administrator, Administrator, the origins of the EPA were built around helping with improving water treatment facilities, okay? Air quality standards, cleanup standards for federal facilities, waste dumping, and more. There, now you know what they're supposed to do. And in all honesty, the initial launch of the EPA was pretty well warranted in the late 60s and early 70s because I'm gonna tell you what, guys, I wasn't born back then, but I saw black and white pictures and it was pretty rough, okay? Factories like the own Alcali Works plant was dumping calcium chloride into the Holston River waterways, causing a little bit of a breathing issue you apparently with fish okay the Cuyahoga River literally started on fire because of how much trash they were putting in there and the Potomac was dumping straight gallons of trash into the water so much so that they pretty much said that if the EPA were to get insti instilled or established they were just gonna shut down they had oil spills off the coast of California and science was advanced enough to recognize that people were actually passing away due to oxygen levels being so poor in New York City due to smog so as the EPA began telling people to stop dumping crap into the water and strapping catalytic converters onto everything that had a cylinder, the world began to get a little bit cleaner. And that's okay, we'll take that. However, as the years progressed, the EPA continued to expand upon attacking things that could potentially impact the environment, regardless of the repercussions of those changes. There was a lot of this going on, especially in the 70s. And if you remember, a lot of the domestic vehicles in the 70s got kind of trashy because of how much the EPA was impacting them, but they needed to do something to clean up the waterways. And if you followed along with EPA's battles, you'd know that they're almost always controversial. After all, it's an agency whose role is to tell people what what to do and then tell you what you're doing wrong. They're like an auditor and no one likes auditors, like nobody at all. You can be a great person, but if you're an auditor, people don't like you, okay? And I'm sorry, but that's just the way that it is. Whether it was an automotive catalytic converter situation of the 70s or the abandoned waste sites of the 80s, the acid rain debacles of the 90s or the California injection of the 2000s, the EPA has always been there trying to battle something out. And now the automotive battle of the 2010s and 2010s, wait a minute, of the 2010s and 2020s is starting to take hold. So why is this a big deal? Well, because what used to be fair is just getting a little kind of sort of unfair. It's starting to use bots to grind out room crafting instead of doing it the old fashioned way, like teleporting to Edgeville, then running through the wildy and not getting killed. Recently, the Environmental Protection Agency has tried and decided to try and sneak in stuff through different acts. Things like the Clean Air Act that a motor vehicle cannot be converted into a racing vehicle used solely for competition. Now there's a lot of fancy words, all right? But that's pretty much the gist. 
access. Now, we all see for off-road use only tags, but this is a bigger deal because it prevents any modification for racing vehicles used in competition whatsoever, like at all. And the it, it's kind of confusing because of all the legal jargon that's in there. It's kind of freaking people out. So just imagine that, just like imagine stock BRZs running around Road America. That'd be hilarious, actually. Either way, the Specialty Equipment Market Association was extremely quick to sniff these sort of things out and found another opportunity here just about a couple months ago. They really sniffed it out with a situation that a lot of you now know of. So SEMA filed an amiscus brief, okay, which just is a fancy document filed by people who are taking a position on one side of a case that's already existing, essentially supporting a cause because they would also be impacted by it. This is the thing that happened. The EPA is going after another company called Gearbox Z. So SEMA filed an amiscus brief with Gearbox Z. Like your friend may submit an amiscus brief to your parents to say that they were with you at church on Sunday when you were in fact getting wasted at the pickle because their parents, if they found out, you'd be grounded too. It's kind of like, an, that's like an amiscus brief. It's a very fancy terminology to say, hey, you're getting my friend in trouble. Don't do that. And this isn't the first time the EPA has tried to do something like this because essentially they're trying to shut down aftermarket modifications. In 2015, they tried to outlaw the modification of automobiles, motorcycles, and more through the Clean Air Act, but were shut down by SEMA absolutely busting doors down, which is good. But a lot of people say that EPA is pretty big, so they probably just backed down worse than got beaten. And just like the good old days, the EPA is trying again, which is why we're here to talk about what's going on with car parts and the EPA. That's why we're done talking about the history of the EPA and why they hate fun, because they honestly really don't hate fun. They're just, you know, they're trying their best, but they're, kind of, they're auditors, right? We're here to talk about the EPA wanting to take away our car parts. So they wanna, tell them no, all right? Well, grab your favorite laptop and register for a TikTok account because we're about to talk about what it's like to actually teach this old man why this is a bad idea and also what you can actually do to help with situations like this. This isn't the first time that the EPA has gone after this. But first off, SEMA has already made the statement that the EPA's interpretation of the Clean Air Act against Gearbox Z, which is the case that's happening right now, against that diesel truck tuner company, which is where this truly all began, is just wrong. EPA's previous position is that it has no interest in vehicles being permanently converted to sanctioned competition use vehicles, which GVZ's devices were sold for with use. Ish. And since the EPA's interpretation of the Clean Air Act has allowed them to play within the gray space of fancy lawyer words, it's always been incredibly difficult for the aftermarket automotive industry to abide by or establish guidelines for product development. Because the Clean Air Act is kind of sort of saying, hey, you can't do that, but if you want to, you can. So companies did. And now EPA is trying to say, no, you can't. So here we are with SEMA trying to fight on behalf of GBZ, even though the arguments aren't exactly identical. And here's the tough part with this situation specifically. Just just like the drive.com said, SEMA is protesting EPA's jurisdiction of off-road emission controls. But the suit against GBZ and EPA is concerned with the manufacturing of the product in the first place and the fact that it doesn't even abide by that rule at all. It's worth a fight, but not exactly an easy battle. In fact, a lot of people don't think that SEMA or GBZ will actually win. So what can you do? Well, situations like these usually incite some form of action, especially in the automotive industry. So a great way to do with this is is to educate yourself and support something that allows us to keep enjoying this crazy automotive passion we all know and love. This will eventually impact everything, especially as the EPA continues to try and find ways to snuff out things that may not be perfect for the environment. Now, aftermarket wheels could be deemed illegal if they're heavier than OEM. Not the case with Artist Art Formed Wheels, ultralight wheel company that we just launched that has deco directional design, lovely finishes, and a passion built behind it that cares about every step of the buying process. Plug, baby, all right? But but aftermarket tires that have a higher burn rate than the boring all seasons that come on OEM vehicles could be deemed illegal use due to waste management and excess, I don't know, fun? It could be those sort of things where once you really start going through this process, there's a lot of things that could start to become illegal. Even with suspension, because the EPA doesn't like fun. It could impact every facet of the automotive industry. And that's why people are really getting worked up now. The suit against the GBZ company against the EPA has opened this door. And with SEMA trying to file the amiscus brief to say, hey, don't do that, it's drawing a lot of attention to this Clean Air Act. So here's what you can do. Go check out SEMA's act that was introduced about 
2019 of December called the Recognition or the Recognizing the Protection of Motorsports Act or RPM Act, which is actually kind of catchy considering what we're talking about. The RPM Act, which is quite simply a document that was presented to the powers that be to protect Americans' right to convert street vehicles into dedicated race cars and the motorsports parts industry ability to sell products that enable racers to compete, essentially allowing the aftermarket modification world to stay alive. This would allow things like superchargers, tuners, and exhaust systems to stay in production, to keep being made. And this was already introduced and had some decent momentum when it was released until it was deadlocked after its introduction in December of 2019. It passed the House Committee, but it actually hasn't even made its way into the House or into the Senate. So if it doesn't do that, it's really not going to do anything. So the biggest thing that SEMA is asking for people to do is to go notify your elected officials to go support the RPM Act. Talk about it. Get people to sign petitions to get movement and noise around this whole thing again. But if you're not of age, at least understand this video and help support those that are trying to make noise about it. That's the biggest thing that's coming down to the case and why people are talking about car parts getting taken away by the EPA. Because it's not essentially saying that they're trying to do it now. The EPA is trying to restrict any sort of delete device on diesel tuners because of emissions, SEMA is saying don't do that, EPA is saying we're gonna do that, and of course the rest of the world is freaking out a little bit because once this door closes, the odds of another one opening, especially over the next couple years, is pretty damn tall. And if SEMA doesn't have enough fight to get the RPM Act through, the odds of the aftermarket modification world staying as big and as robust as it is, is going to get more difficult and more difficult. So what do you think? Is the EPA doing the right thing and do you want to watch 2021 Honda CRVs running around road Atlanta or do you think that they're out of their minds. Let us know. And of course, if you're looking for aftermarket wheels, tires, or suspension, be sure to check us out over at fitmentindustries.com. I'm Alex from Fitment Industries, and we will see you later. Adios. I'm not hitting my coffee. Not doing it again. Ha <laughs> ha.